Hello, this is Susan Woods, your Black Lives Matter fraud investigator. Thank you for your time. I am continuing with my analysis of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation's 2020 Form 990 information return. Today, I'm going to talk about part nine of the Form 990, which is the statement of functional expenses. And because it's such a large section of the Form 990, I'm only going to focus in on lines 1 through 10 and identify red flags on those lines only. The new hashtag that I'm using is called the BLM hoax. Hashtag the BLM hoax. Thank you for joining this presentation. What is the Form 990? The Form 990 Information Return, or Form 990, is an annual report the IRS requires all 501c3 nonprofit organizations to submit to provide information about revenues and expenses for the prior year. The type of Form 990 nonprofit organizations submit depends on the type of nonprofit organization and the amount of revenues and assets the nonprofit organization has on record. Form 990s are due by the 15th day of the fifth month after the fiscal year ends. For example, if the fiscal year ends on December the 31st, then the Form 990 is due by May 15th of the next year. The primary purpose of the Form 990 is to demonstrate transparency and accountability. If the nonprofit team fails to file the Form 990 for three consecutive years, the IRS automatically revokes the 501c3 nonprofit status. And let me emphasize here, you have to file the Form 990 every single year, even if your nonprofit organization does not generate even any revenues at all, even if your nonprofit organization is not offering services, you still have to submit a Form 990 to avoid automatic revocation because when your status is revoked, you cannot offer community services, you cannot accept any money, you are no longer in existence as far as the IRS is concerned, and you will have to complete the application process all over again to reinstate your 501c3 status. So that's what the Form 990 is all about. Again, I'm focusing this video message on examining the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation's Form 990, Part 8, I'm sorry, Part 9 for 2020, Statement of Functional Expenses. And I'm only focusing on lines 1 through 10 because this is a very big part of the Form 990. So I wanted to break it up into different parts. So I'm doing lines one through 10 in this video. The next video will be parts, I mean, lines 11 through 15. And then the final video will be focusing on lines 16 through 25. As always, I highly recommend that anytime you examine the Form 990 information return for a nonprofit organization, always download the instructions that go along with that year's Form 990. So I have downloaded the instructions for 2020 because that's the Form 990 version that we are focusing on, the 2020 version of the Form 990. So you want to download those instructions. And a lot of times people print them, but this these instructions are 102 pages. So you may not want to print all of those pages, but certainly have them open so that you can refer to them as you go through the Form 990 because the instructions literally explain what each line should contain. So it's very valuable information that you can leverage while you are reviewing the Form 990. So here's the Form 990 for the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, and I have it queued up to the part nine statement of functional expenses that we're going to focus on. And this is the public, the public inspection copy 
of the Form 990 for 2020, as you can see up here, Form 990-2020, Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, the EIN is here, 82-486-2489, and we're on page 10 of the Form 990. And again, we're focusing on Part 9, Statement of Functional Expenses. So let's get started. Now, the information in the red squares that you're going to see, or the squares with the red borders that you're going to see, I have cropped them out of the Form 990 instructions, just to let you see how the instructions read. And for this part that I cropped out and made a copy of and created this box, it just explains what the Part 9 Statement of Functional Expenses are all about. So it says, check the box in the heading of part nine if schedule O, the form 990 or form 990EZ, contains any information pertaining to this part. So if you notice here, right across, it says, check if schedule O contains a response or note to any line in this part nine. And over here, the person that created or completed the form 990 did put an X in this box, which means that later on, when we start looking at the schedules, which are documents that include additional information at the back or in, as the appendix of a Form 990, when we look at the Schedule O, we should expect to see information that pertains to the um, data or information that's in this particular part, Part 9 of the Form 990. So now it says, use the organization's normal accounting method to complete this section. And I'm not going to read all of this information to you because I know it's not the most exciting information for most people except myself, maybe. But I'm just going to let you read it for yourself. And then we're going to move on to examining the different parts of the different columns of this particular Form 990 Part 9, Statement of Functional Expenses. So just go ahead and read the rest of the information about what the Statement of Functional Expenses means, and then I'll move forward. Okay, so let's move forward. Now I'm going to talk about or define the columns that are across the top here. You see A, B, C, and D. A is total expenses. B, program service expenses. C, management and general expenses. And D, fundraising expenses. So let's take some time to talk about each one of these columns. The first column I'm gonna start with is column B, program service expenses. And this is how it is defined in the um, in the in this. I'm sorry, I got distracted. I apologize. This is how column B is defined in the instructions. Column B program services. Program services are mainly those activities that further the organization's exempt purposes. Fundraising expenses should not be reported as program service expenses, even though one of the organization's purposes is to solicit contributions. Include lobbying expenses in this column if the lobbying is directly related to the organization's exempt purposes. So that's the definition of program services. So keep that definition in mind as we go through and examine each line, lines one, lines one through 10, as we go through and examine, we'll take a look at how much money is included under the program services expenses column. Remember the definition. Anything in that column are supposed to further the exempt, organ the, uh, I'm sorry, let me say it again. Program services are mainly those activities that further the organization's exempt purposes. Everything listed in column B should further the purposes of this organization, what it stands for. OK, 
Okay, next we'll look at column C, which is management and general expenses. Management and general expenses. Let's talk about that. This is a big one, right? Column C, management and general expenses. Use column C, and again, this square that I'm showing here comes directly from the instructions. I want you to get an understanding of how important having the instructions in front of you can be when you're trying to understand why certain information is included in the columns. So getting back to this, column C, management and general expenses. Use column C to report expenses that relate to the organization's overall operations and management rather than to fundraising activities or program services. Overall management usually includes the salaries and expenses of the organization's chief executive officers and his or her staff, unless as a part of their time, unless a part of their time, excuse me, is spent directly super supervising program services or fundraising activities. In that case, their salaries and expenses should be allocated among management, fundraising, and program services. I'm not going to read everything else, but you can um, read everything else about management and general expenses. And what should go into the column? What should go into this particular column? So I'm going to give you a few moments to glance over what should be included in this column C according to the instructions in this box with the red border that I extracted directly from the instructions. Okay, very good. And if you didn't have the opportunity to read everything um, in this box, highlighted box, let's certainly go back and read it. And again, if you download the instructions and have them on the screen as you go through this with me, then you, you can go back and read it at any time you want. The fourth column, column D, is fundraising expenses. So column D, fundraising expenses. Fundraising expenses are the expenses incurred in soliciting cash and non-cash contributions, gifts, and grants. As they say, it takes money to make money. So it takes money. It takes expenses. You must incur expenses in order to raise money for an organization. So that's what this means. You are documenting how much money this organization spent to fundraise? How much money did this organization spend to get contributions such as uh, gifts and grants and cash and non-cash contributions? Report as fundraising expenses, all expenses including allocable overhead costs incurred in publicizing and conducting fundraising campaigns, soliciting requests and grants from individuals, foundations, or other organizations or governmental units that are reported on part eight, line one, okay? So if you go back to part eight, line one, you will see money that was generated from fundraising. So you want to count or you want to report the expenses that the organization incurred to generate that money from fundraising activities. So it's no harm in saying, okay, we had to purchase the raffle tickets to have the raffle, but that's a fundraising expense. The cost of the raffle tickets, the cost of renting the facilities for the banquet that you held to raise money. All of those things are fundraising expenses. And not only do you want to look at a Form 990 for the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, but 
why don't you get in the habit of asking for the Form 990 for any organization that you are considering investing? You want to have an understanding of how they report their revenues and expenses. So now that we've looked at columns B, C, and D, we're going to take a look now at the total expenses column. I intentionally wanted to look at the program service expenses, management, and general expenses and fundraising expenses before I look at the total because the total is just what it is, total expenses. And I'm not sure why the Form 990s start with total expenses and not have total expenses as after fundraising to show a total. I don't understand that layout, but it is the layout that they, that they use. So total expenses is actually column A. So it totals all of the expenses for the organization. So Section 501c3 and 501c4 organizations must complete columns A through D. Since the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation is considered a 501c3 nonprofit organization, then the person who completed this Form 990 had to include information, pertinent information, in all four columns, columns A through D. Now that we've talked about all of the columns, it's now time for us to talk about the lines. And the lines are numerical. You notice the columns are, uses letters to identify the columns, capital letters A, B, C, D. If there were others, it'd be E through Z and so forth. But the lines use numbers. The lines, the line items, if you will, they use numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because we're only focusing on the first ten in this video. So let's get started. Talking about the lines now. Line one. Now, I included this block once again to let you see how the instructions clearly tell us what should go everywhere in the form 990. So now we're focusing on, on the lines. Now I'm not gonna have a block for every line. This is the only one I created for you because you can reference back to the instructions yourself if you have questions about what the lines should include. Um, some of the lines are self-explanatory and you don't won't need this block, but when you do, you can always go back to the instructions and find it. So line one says, or reads, enter the amount that the organization at its own discretion paid in grants to domestic organizations and domestic governments. United Way and similar federated fundraising organizations should report grants to member or participating agencies on line one. Organizations must report voluntary grants to state or local affiliates for specific restricted purposes or projects online one. Okay, so it goes on to say, if the organization reported online one, more than $5,000 of grants or other assistance to any domestic organization or to any domestic government, the organization must complete parts one and two of schedule I. You remember I said the schedules are at the very bottom of the form 990, like in the appendix section. So if the organization reported something on line one, as this organization did, then when we get to schedule I, we should see an entry on schedule I for this particular line to correlate with line one. All right. So let's take a look at this. Here's line one. And line one, according to what we see here, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation gave away or granted money to domestic organizations in the amount of $17,971,790. To domestic organizations. Okay, and they allocated all of that expense under B, program service expenses. 
Now, I could raise a red flag here because I'm wondering why they didn't include the grants that they allocated in the amount of approximately $30 million. Why didn't they mention that amount here? That You see, they, they gave $30 million to LGBTQIA organizations, but they don't account for it here. But I didn't raise a red flag because I want to do some more research to see why they did not include that here. So I didn't raise a red flag, but I am wondering. I will come back to it. So again, the organization is claiming that it gave $17,971,790 to some nonprofits, so to some domestic organizations or governments. So when we go to, remember the schedule that we're going to have to go to to verify this? When we go to Schedule I, guess what? Schedule I should list those organizations along with the specific amount that each organization received from this organization. And another thing that we would be able to look at is whether or not those organizations are 501c3 nonprofit organizations or not. Okay. Next, we're going to look at Line three, because line two doesn't have an entry, so no need to look at line two. But line three says, grants or other assistance to foreign organizations, foreign governments, and foreign individuals. Now, I happen to have a copy of the Form 990 in my hand, so I can just tell you what it says for line three. Line three says, the organization must enter the total amount of grants and other assistance made to foreign organizations, just like in line one, same process, but this one is dealing with foreign organizations. So according to this organization, they gave $8,026,155 to foreign organizations. And to see which foreign organizations received that money, we will go to schedule F. Schedule F will list the names of the organizations, the foreign organizations that receive this money and the specific amounts each one of them received. Let's look at line seven because we don't have anything in lines four, five, or six. So we're gonna jump down to line seven to analyze the salaries. Now, on line seven of the salaries and wages, it says, Enter the total amount of employee, and the employee, the word employee is bold, bolded, bolded, in bold. Employee salaries, wages, fees, bonuses, severance payments, and similar amounts paid or provided from the filing organizations, which is the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. So once again, I'm going to read the instructions directly from the instructions for this 990 for line seven. Line seven, enter the total amount of employee salaries, wages, fees, bonuses, severance payments, and similar amounts paid or provided from the filing organization, which is the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. Okay, so we see here that the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation claims to have paid out a total of $199,928. They broke it down into the three columns. You have program service expenses received $159,775 out of that amount. Management and general expenses received $35,753. And then fundraising expenses received or was allocated $4,400. So whoever completed this Form 990 said, okay, the salaries and wages were divided among three categories of expenses, program services, management and general expenses, and fundraising expenses. So they pay people out of those three different categories for a total of $199,928. I raise a red flag on this one because I distinctly remember 
sharing with you that Patrice Conn Coolers, who was the founder, one of the three founders of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, along with two other women, Patrice Conn Coolers was the only employee on record for 2020. And she claimed that she only earned $20,000 from the organization in 2020. So I'm confused about this amount that was listed here. Where does $199,928 comes from if she was only paid $20,000? So that's a red flag for me. Next, we'll look at number eight, line eight. And this deals with pension plan accruals and contributions, includes section 401k and 403b employer contributions. So the organization is claiming $7,808 for pension plan accru accruals and contributions. And of course, if you allocated the payroll for the salaries, you're going to have to allocate the pension plan among the three categories as well, program service expenses, management and general expenses, and fundraising. All right, so you can probably guess that I have a red flag about this one too, because it is related to or contingent upon number seven. Line eight is contingent upon number seven, line seven, because it relates back to salaries and wages. Why are you paying a pension for a person who says they only generated $20,000 a year? How do you have a pension in this amount? Line nine, which is other employee benefits. Other employee benefits based on the information in the instruction read as follows. Intra contributions by the filing organization such as, I'm sorry, let me start again. Line nine reads as follows. Other employee benefits. Intra, inter contributions by the filing organization, which is the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation that pertains to insurance, health, and welfare programs that aren't an incidental part of a pension plan, which you've already included on line eight, also include the cost of other employee benefits. So going back to what I said before, where does this money come from? If it's contingent upon salaries and wages, where does it come from? insurance, health, and welfare programs? I don't understand. I don't understand this if the employee says the one single employee on record that I've already talked about in another video says she only made $20,000. Finally, oh, I'm sorry. So that gets a red flag. So that's another red flag for line nine. Finally, we'll talk about line 10, which is payroll taxes. And according to the instructions, payroll taxes definition reads as follows. Enter the amount of federal, state, and local payroll taxes for the year, but only those taxes that are imposed on the organization as an employer. This includes the employer's share of Social Security and Medicare taxes, the federal unemployment tax, state unemployment compensation taxes, and other state and local payroll taxes. $16,331 is the total amount that this organization claims to have paid for payroll taxes. And they divided the payroll taxes among the other three, among the three categories, program service expenses in column B, management and general expenses in column C, and fundraising expenses in column D. Another red flag. 
another red flag that I have identified for this section. And we've only talked about the first 10 lines, lines one through 10. I've identified four red flags already. So let's look at the red flags in this section. We're talking about section nine, statement of functional expenses. And again, we're focusing only on lines one through 10. And I've identified red flags on lines seven, eight, nine, and 10. In line seven, I was wondering about Patrice Con Coolers being the only employee and claim only $20,000. So why was the salary amount so much more than that? Line eight, explain the amount of pension contributions. Line nine, explain the amount of employee benefits. And line 10, explain the amount of payroll taxes. I'm confused about that. So for this one section of part nine, I've identified four red flags. Let's take a look at the cumulative Form 990 red flags that I've identified since I've started analyzing this one Form 990. 46 red flags so far because I list each part or each section of the Form 990 and I list the number of red flags that I find in each part of the Form 990. For example, in this last part, I found four on lines one through 10. So there are 46 red flags that I've identified and I am not a forensic accountant. I'm not a forensic accountant. I'm just someone who has been working in the nonprofit sector since 2003. I've operated my own nonprofit organization and I have been teaching people how to kind of start and reinstate nonprofit organizations. I do online classes and I've already completed the Form 1023 application for recognition of exemption for over 400 clients representing 33 states since 2010. So I'm not an accountant. I would be interested to see how a forensic nonprofit accountant would look at this Form 990. This Form 990 is plagued with, with red flags. And so the obvious question to me is, how did the IRS approve it? You see, they submitted it to the IRS and the IRS approved the Form 990. How, how can that be? I don't understand. How can it be? And I guess it's because it would take someone raising their hand to say, look at this Form 990 IRS. How can a person that is not a forensic accountant, not someone on your accounting staff, find 46 red flags? Up next, we're going to continue talking about part nine, statement of functional expenses. And we're going to focus in the next video on lines 11 through 15. I'm Susan Woods, your Black Lives Matter fraud investigator. I've been investigating the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and its now defunct chapters since June of 2020. Over four years, I've been investigating this organization. And I have some great news. There is a book. I'm going to announce the book next week so that you can, if you would like to order it or pre-order the book, you will be able to do so at that time. But I plan to announce the book on next week. Um not sure what today I'm going to be permitted to announce it, but I hope it's tomorrow. I hope it's Monday. I hope it's Monday, September the 23rd. I hope that I'm able to come live on, on the YouTube channel to let you know that you can pre-order the book if you're interested in all of the information that I've shared being compiled in one book. I want to thank you for your support and your encouragement over these last four years. 
I appreciate the interest that's still here about what I consider as the Black Lives Matter hoax. And I hope that one day the book will be a valuable resource for people to use when learning about what I feel is a major fraud against people who simply wanted to help. They gave their money out of the goodness of their hearts because they believed the narrative that Patrice Kahn Coolers and her cohorts presented to them that the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and the Black Lives Matter movement were actually going to help the Black community. And it only enriched themselves. I say they exploited Black pain for their financial gain. Thank you for your time and have a great day.